is an eagle mask for Tristan. She's the young, youngest member of my dance group. She doesn't have an eagle mask. She belongs to Eagle Clan. So hopefully this will fit the bill. Try to make these the performance masks. Try to make these masks real thin, so they're so light and easy to wear that the person it becomes part of that person's face. You don't want to dance like you're wearing a mask, you know. You want to dance like you are the mask. Artist and native Alaskan David Boxley. He's traveled far from his childhood roots from a small village just south of Ketchikan, Alaska. Now a collector worldwide, studied, he's never made artistic fame his primary goal. Rather, he spent the last 30 years focused on resurrecting the culture of his native people, Simshian. His personal quest, his artistic vision, has helped young and old alike to embrace the art, the dance, the music, the very essence of being Simshian. If you've ever doubted the ability of an artist to enrich a community, you've yet to meet the spirit of David Boxley. Well, the eagle, in this case, is that's the story. It's about the, this young chief who was walking along the beach, and he saw an eagle that was uh, trapped in some fish net in the bushes near the, near the water. He let the eagle go, not realizing that he was freeing a, what we call a nachnoch, which means uh, spirit guardian mm -hmm. or supernatural being. Later on, time went by, and later on, the young man's chief, but he was a chief, the young man's village was um, starving because the summer had not been good and they, couldn't, they didn't have enough food. And uh, he was walking along that same stretch of beach trying to decide, you know, what do I do? How do I help my people? And a live salmon fell out of the sky and was flopping around in front of him. And he looked around and he heard the, you know, these wings going off. And every day the eagle would return and bring salmon, bring salmon, bring salmon. And then it brought halibut, and it brought seals, and it brought porpoise, and then eventually it brought a big whale. This was a magical eagle, you know, and, and it was repaying him for the, uh, for the uh, kindness mm -hmm. that he had shown. And what are, what are, you, what are you carving right now? I'm uh, at the beginning of a transformation mask. It's an eagle, eagle transformation mask, and I'm just I'm doing both of the sides, and the, the mask itself is in three parts. And this is the outer mask. That's the that's the inner mask there. And this piece and, here? And during the dance, yeah, during the dance, there's a certain point in the dance where the mask opens wow. and reveals that inner wow. that inner mask. And this is the story of uh, this magical eagle. So some of these sculptures are ultimately kinetic. I mean, their life is made real when they're used. Or no, that's the beauty of them. Yeah. You know, that's that's one of the uh, that's one of the uh, gifts that I get. You know, um, creating something that in these modern days is still used for the purposes that it was used when uh, when our ancestors created these things uh, to be danced around the firelight. You know, in the longhouse in the winter time. You know. Uh, I get great satisfaction out of that. What about the other images that I see on the table here? This, this, for example, or this mask. These are masks as well, right? Yeah, this is a forehead mask. This is a raven forehead mask. It's worn like this. Yes. And this is a trade with two ladies. Uh, I'm making another one. It's in my refrigerator. It's in partially made. And uh, keep it in there and keep it cool and from drying out. But this one is carved, so it's being it's drying now. But uh, this is a raven, and the other one is a thunderbird. And I've I've traded two uh, two friends of mine who uh, provided me uh, with uh, food from from Alaska. You know, oh. salmon and you know shrimp and crab and you know things that I can't get really 
uh, uh, most of what I call Indian food, right. you know, seafood, I get uh, from trades from my own artwork. Does this start out as a block like this? Well, actually, like more like one of those rounds there, you know, I block one of the, the chopping block. You know? Oh yeah, and it starts out like that, and I chop it into the into the shape. And, and then I notice you've got the, the the drawing marks, just like a regular sculptor. Yeah. You keep drawing and and reducing. This is um, this is the Thunderbird. And this is just a piece of alder that I, I keep in the refrigerator, and that's mm -hmm. that's more of the rough. The rough look as to what that looked like before I, you know, except that the beak is turned down, and I'm going to add, add some curled feathers to the top to uh, carve, you know, to show the Thunderbird. Your design? Yeah. Yeah, you can, you know, I, there are times when I, I sit down and I make a drawing, and I've got, you know, I've got stacks of old drawings that that were the basis for totem poles or masks or things like that. But I, I pretty much know what I'm doing there with that one, so I just go ahead and do it. Is this a creative format? I mean, are you allowed to go as far as you want? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, the, I'm, carving, uh, I'm carving what I think is classic Simshan style, but I'm also carving what is David Boxley's style. You know, Simshan style, and I, you know, there are certain things that I. It's based on old pieces that I've observed in museums. Those are my biggest teachers: is those old pieces that I've seen in museums, and I want my work to look like that. You know, I've I've had some instruction. You know, you, about three months total in 24 years in, uh -huh. at the very beginning from two different guys, but the majority of what I've done and the style that has evolved from it is is totally from me studying old pieces and just making a whole bunch of chips I was born in Ketchikan in Alaska um, 1952 and I was taken from the hospital when I was two days old by my grandmother and grandfather, my full-blood Simshian grandparents, and taken to Metlakatla in Alaska, which is 15 miles south of, of Ketchikan, and uh, raised there in my grandparents' house. And my grandfather loved me, and uh, he was very proud of me. He talked for years after my college graduation. Of, they went, they came down to Seattle and he attended my graduation. And he, he was pretty proud of me. Then when I started carving, he uh, spent a lot of time in, in my carving shop with me. and He took me out in the woods and taught me how to uh, select trees and, and how to, fe uh, how to uh, fell them and... and um, how the right directions and the right, right way to move them around, and when I was on my own, what you know, how to use leverage, and it was just uh, he was a good guy. He taught me a lot about values and morals and being proud of who you are and being being honorable. My grandfather was a great man. Did your grandfather teach you how to carve and, and these and how to use wood? No. Um, you, my you grandfather, I'm, I'm self-taught mostly. Um, my grandfather, uh, I didn't realize that my grandfather was a carver until I started carving. Uh -huh. uh, but he was not a carver of this kind of stuff. He, his father was a full-size canoe maker. And, and I see you know, handmade tools here. Are those you... are handles there, yeah. Those are handles for adzes. See, this is... This is uh wow, this is this is an alder you know a little mm -hmm. alder tree. There's the branch. Right. And then there's there's the handle that oh, they, the, the tool that comes from it. When do you use a tool like this? Well I, I use this all the time and this is for uh, it's a planing tool, you see that's got that little lip coming down. Yeah. But I use it for going across the grain and for shaping and flattening. It's just like using a hand plane. Really? Yeah. And when you use you know you use a big wide tool like that with a with a, the lip coming down that that's a certain kind of carving, and then yeah, you this one here this is a much different blade see, yeah. and this one here is a carving what I call a carving adds more because this one is gonna this one is going to take 
this block of wood and it's going to shape, you know, it's going to make the shape of the, uh, of the uh, uh, mm -hmm. figure that I'm trying to have come out of the wood. You know, and of course the back, there's a lot of hollowing out. And this one here is, is you know, close, but it's not finished. And you and then, hand sand? Well, I, yeah, we sand afterwards so we can paint, you know, afterwards. Um, but this is modern times, too. I use an orbital sander if I have a big space that I want to get through quicker. You know, it's just like using a chainsaw when you're carving a totem pole, you know. People get all, hey, you're cheating kind of thing. You know, I don't think I'm cheating. You know, one guy said to me, well, your grandfather would be ashamed of you if, you, if he saw you using a chainsaw. And I said, my grandfather bought me my first chainsaw. <laughs> My grandfather was, you know, trying to help me, you know, yeah. trying to make, make the work yeah. easier. But in the end, uh, for something to go from this to this, I mean, I have to use my hands. I have to use my knives. I have to use my own, I guess you could call it skill, to go from this to this. You know, uh, electric tools or power tools are a, are a service. You know, they help you to, to, sure. to get rid of wood and uh, move or quicker. You know, you have to, and you want to make a living, so you don't want to be spending too much time on it, but that doesn't mean you're in a rush, it just means it saves time. This is very abstract. Is this abstract? Yeah, re rep it's representative, yeah. You see it as representative. Yeah, it, it, the, it, all the figures represent or, or stand for something and then put together they, they become either a creature or a human or, you know, bird, animal. Show me what you mean. Well. This is this is the actually this is one style. This is a chest design that's that's bent over this or the corner of this box. Here's the head. There is eyes. Uh -huh. There's his belly. These are his hip joints. Really? These are his hands. See? These these are these these side panels are are mostly uh, you know they could represent some kind of a creature, but in this case they're they're designed. When I turn this, you can see the little human faces in there. Mm-hmm. I turn this. This is the back side, and you see the back of the head. It's like a, almost an X-ray view of the front, uh -huh. but just a little bit different. And then there's the the eyes, and then the uh, hands again, and then a a little uh, human face right in the in the middle, and a couple other tiny little human faces with the hands. And this is the belly area, and then the hip joint. And this is this whole thing. This whole thing is is made from one piece of wood steamed and bent Whoa, really? and joined at the corners. It's joined at this corner. These are bent. As my son is preparing a, a box now that he's going to be bending. And this is today. the lid that goes on it? And this, yeah, this is the actual lid for it. Yeah. Well, that's a big piece too. The system of, of, uh, of design is very exacting. The rules are very uh, strict. But when you learn those rules, you can make anything. You know, you can make snakes, you can make elephants, you know, you can make things that are not part of the Northwest Coast culture. But it's really important that, uh, to learn the, uh, the design system and where everything is connected. And uh, that, that gives you the freedom to, to, uh, to create. I'd like to introduce you to my son, Zach. Hey, Zach. He's preparing a, a board to, to make a bentwood box. You can see that the the, this is the back side, and he's cut kerfs on the other side uh, and channels. And then on this side, he's doing uh, cutting a little bit of the fibers off because when a, when a piece of wood bends, the outer fibers separate, and, and the middle fibers are what bend, and then the inner fibers crush. So they they all bend over, and we got three corners to bend, and then the two ends will fit together. And do what? You put it over here and just push well, down. Well, no, we're going to use steam. Ah. We're going to we'll use steam on each corner and. Um, Zach can pretty much tell you uh, the process and in, uh, in, in what he does with the uh, with the uh, the steamer and and how that works and with spacers and everything. Are like you going to have time to show us how you do this today? You have a machine that you use? Uh, yeah, we have a. Well, actually, we don't have a machine. Well, it's, we we built a steamer, hooked up to a, a crab cooker, a propane crab cooker, and then we fill up a, a vandal gas can with water in it. Boils the water and brings the steam over into the. Softens it, softens yeah, it. You put it right on the bend and it, all the steam and stuff softens the wood and then after about 20 minutes it's ready to, ready to bend. So the pieces we saw in your studio. Started, they started out like this. Started out like this. Yeah, the, the boxes you saw. Yeah. Zach is really good at this. His his strength uh, uh, in is uh, 
this box making and, and drum making and uh, pretty proud of him. He's, uh, he's really a good craftsman in that way. Ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Keep going. You gonna take one of these off? In the old days, they uh, they used just a uh, cedar bark rope and wrapped around there to hold these and then put sticks in between like this to keep it square when they were while it was uh, drying. Should fit. There you go. Bentwood box. Art is meant to evolve. Every kind of art, as you know, mm -hmm. is meant to evolve. It, you know, it changes with every single guy's hands or woman's hands, you know, depending on the artist, you know, and they add a little of their own to it. But the problem for me is this kind of design system, carving, design, everything, was banned, was outlawed because it was connected uh, I, to potlatch. It was connected to the act of giving away things and dancing and singing. It was all part of it. The ceremony. So, so, so governments and missionaries uh -huh. uh, figured that, you know, in order to, ma to either make them, these people uh, disappear or nice colonial uh, uh, subjects, that we have to stop them from doing this. They can't do this anymore, see? So, the people who knew how to do this stuff, who were the masters at it, were forbidden from doing it, and then they died from either you know smallpox or you know flu or some measles or things they couldn't uh, couldn't fight, and then they were also uh, punished, actually sent to jail, you know, for not for being an artist, but for per, per, but for being part of those ceremonies. My only outlet or my only uh, saving. Uh, grace, I guess you could call it, is that I, I could go to the museums and, and at least look at what I thought, you know, those guys knew what they were talking about. It was they lived it. It wasn't just art. It, this, isn't, this wasn't just art, you know. It, no. was, it was to say, this is who this belongs to. This is the clan. This is the spirit power. This is the culture. Wow. This is a red cedar mask that we use for dancing. It's got a couple of handles in the back, and my son dances this mask, and it's worn like this. And the song, the song is about our people and uh, the resurgence of our culture. And the song that this mask goes to is called Noom Noel. It belongs to us, and that's what this is. This represents a classic Simshian style mask but it also represents our people and the resurgence of our culture. In a sense, you're carrying around the entire history of your clan and your people. And well, the, the journey that I've been on uh, with the culture and reviving the culture is, <laughs> yeah, a lot of it is in these, ma in these boxes. Well, let me see what else is in there. Oh, let me see. That's an alder rattle, a Simshan-style shaman's rattle. This is a chief's headdress. We didn't wear war bonnets and feathers, and a chief would wear this. This uh, ermine skins, and the wow. eagle down would be put in here, and a person would wear this. We use this to honor the chiefs, and we'd, when we dance, the the down floats up from this and goes down over everybody. And see, here's some of it. Here's the... And that's got abalone on it. Abalone, yeah. This is a this is a chief's. I'm not a chief, but this is a represents a chief's headdress, and dance with the rattle and and uh, opens uh, ceremonies to say everything's peaceful between the hosts and the guests. Did you make that? I did. I made everything here. When I when we're dancing with these masks, time just goes backward. You know, we just we end. It's just like the guys who were doing these uh, 200 years ago, you know. And 
masks like this one here. This is a this is a mask that I did. It's a transforming mask that wow. that is a killer whale song, and 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 this is a you see the killer whale's fin yes. and his dorsal fin. And yes. At a certain point in the dance, I I pull on these pull on these carved little killer whales here, and the mask opens up. Incredible. And it Incredible. transforms into a human there. Well, it, you know, it, the, the whole idea behind transformation masks like this is to show that, that our people believe that all animals, all nature had a dual personality. There was a human side and an and a, uh, uh, animal or bird side. And the killer whale people lived in, in villages and had longhouses and totem poles just like we did, only they lived far away under the sea. Like the salmon, you know, the salmon had five villages far away under the sea, and they, and they came in the in the toward the end of the summer to come to the creeks and offer themselves to our people, you know, if we would treat them uh, respectfully, you know, treat them with kindness. What about non-native people who are carving or inspired by this work? What what is your take on that? I just believe that uh, you know, it's it's this, this is a free country. This is this is a free country, and people have the right to to you know have a hobby and and make their own you know make artwork and enjoy that. And uh, but I think there's a big difference when when somebody not native is creating this art that we think so much of that we use and in, in to sing and to dance and to be proud of, and it's who we are. When somebody who's not native uh, makes this and then sells it. Or even worse, to me, wears button robes and, and regalia and, and play, does potlatches and you know and takes on names that a lot of native people don't even have. So it's a it's a touchy area. This is one of the stories that we have too. This one of our girls dances this one. This is Mouse Woman. This is a story of how Mouse Woman gives good advice to the so-called heroes of of the story and tries to warn them about this evil cannibal giant that's chasing after them. This is goes with that mouse woman mask. This is uh, the cannibal giant, Baush. He's a guy, he's the origin of mosquitoes. And these are the sparks that fly up from the fire that they when they were when they finally caught him and they were burning him up. He said, you'll never get rid of me, I'll be turned. And he got burned up and the sparks flew up from the fire and turned into mosquitoes and he's been biting us ever since. Anogadenda will meal Ha ha tinene, ha ha tinene. I write the words in English and then I translate them to our language. I try to, have, like I said, I, I have a concept, an idea of of what this, this the beat has to sound like, or that you know, if you're doing a, a song that has a beat like this, so the song's going to be sweet and and nice, you know. Um, this is the beat for a song called Auntie's Lullaby. Oh, I... You know, so that's a woman's dance and it's very graceful and beautiful in that. But uh, then you have a song my, my son wrote. Uh, it's a single beat song where he wrote this and it's uh, thank you for inviting us to your event. So that's, you know, we're happy that you invited us. That's that kind of a song. Yeah. I have a, a, new, uh, a new performance that is called The Three Enemies. And my personal feeling uh, is that the three biggest enemies of my people are ignorance, Jealousy and alcohol, and in this in this performance, not really a dance. It's more of a performance, and with uh, with song, um, ignorance and uh, and jealousy and alcohol 
uh, beset this young person, and they're all wearing masks, and they are, she is rescued, he, she is rescued by this elder who comes out of the past to intercede between this young person and these, these not-so-great entities. Because, you know, regardless whether we're native or non-native, uh, uh, jealousy hurts everybody. You know, and ignorance uh, hinders us from progressing on and working together. And, and of course, uh, everybody knows what alcohol is. And alcohol is a great thief, great, a great liar that, that uh, makes us think we're better than we are and eventually takes everything away. Will this performance take place in, in native language or in English? It'll be total native language. Fantastic. Yeah, I wrote the songs. Does everyone understand the language? Of course not. Ah! <laughs> but... It wouldn't be the same if I went out there and started singing in English That's right. or some other language, you know, other than my own language. What makes it powerful, what makes us who we are is the language we're speaking, which is one of the reasons why uh, I'm so desperately trying to preserve what I know and trying to make, um, make uh, my knowledge and uh, increase my knowledge in the language too by working with old or elder people, you know, and, uh, those, and those who are a much better speaker than I am. It's a... It's a uh, not a, it's not a so much desperate, but it's a heartfelt uh, desire to to learn the culture more, you know, and learn the language more. Because the, in where goes, as someone said, uh, where goes the language goes the culture. Otherwise, we all belong to the shopping mall tribe. Alcohol, as he steals your health, steals your culture. If you use him or look the other way, he wins. Don't let him have our children. <laughs> Skushkum skum. Yeah, I'm gonna work real hard on these six songs here. Five masks. He's a very work work oriented person. Uh, he's taught me to just be. A, if I'm a man, it's being honest and uh, doing what you say you're gonna do, and uh, just to. Uh, just not forget where he came from, I guess. You know, it's if you don't practice and remember where he came from, then it'll be gone, and your your children, my children, won't know about their heritage because it wasn't there for me to learn. But luckily, with with my dad, it's uh, it's a very big force behind my life, and hopefully, my children's life. <laughs> So I've been very lucky to, to go beyond just being an artist. Uh, um, I'm also uh, looked at as a culture bearer, and uh, I didn't give myself that title, but I, you know, it's a it's a good weight, it's, it's a good feeling to to be thought of that way, and uh, I feel very lucky that uh, over the years I've had the opportunity to to uh, be a positive force in in the journey that our culture has has been on in the last you know 10, 20 years. Like they say, education is, you know, is uh, strength, you know, and um, so I'm hoping that uh, that that part of it is just uh, bringing our young people uh, along with us uh, because that's the future. And, and what good is it? What good is it for me to do everything if the if there's nobody behind me, you know? And, and that's what I that's how I value my my children and the kids that they that they affect is. Is, uh, that's our. That's still our biggest struggle: is is competing with this world. You know?